On September 8, 1944, the first of four ballistic missile, better known as the V-2, fell on London. For the first time in history, missiles were used as a strategic weapon, and the plans of German engineers extended even further and higher to the near-Earth space from where they were going to strike at the United States. Extraterrestrial Scientist The appearance of heavy liquid-fueled ballistic missiles was inextricably linked with the idea of interplanetary flights. The founders of theoretical astronautics in Germany, France, the USSR, and the USA independently came to the conclusion that there is no other technically feasible means for launching an artificial satellite of the Earth or carrying out an expedition to the Moon. The greatest successes in rocket science between the world wars were achieved by German specialists. The breakthrough was largely facilitated by the activities of Hermann Oberth, who lived in the Romanian town of Hermannstadt, but maintained active contacts with astronautics enthusiasts around the world. Thanks to Oberth, the educated part of society saw that astronautics is not only an area of interest for science fiction writers, but also an activity in which engineers and industrialists can show their abilities. I must say that at that time the Germans of Europe lived in anticipation of revenge. Many politicians spoke about the injustice of the Versailles Peace Treaty, concluded in June 1919, and turned the once advanced power into a devastated and partially occupied country. Unable to escape from a series of political and economic crises, Ulbricht's ideas turned out to be in demand by revanchists which manifested itself even in the science fiction of that time. However, Oberth himself could not resist fantasies about the military use of space rockets. In 1930, his review article, The Three Sides of the Rocket, was published, in which, along with general considerations, the idea was expressed of the potential possibility of launching a missile attack from Europe on New York. The article was accompanied by an appropriate illustration, smoky traces of falling rockets explosions and fires on the streets of an American city. Space Launch Oberth's plans were brought to life by his best student, Werner von Braun. As practice quickly showed, it was impossible to implement any large-scale rocket science program without the help of the military. On October 1, 1932, von Braun became a civilian employee of the Reichswehr and under the direct supervision of artilleryman Walter Dornberger began work on the project of the A rocket with an alcohol and oxygen engine. Initially timid, the initiative later grew into a colossal program for the serial production of four ballistic missiles capable of delivering a ton of explosives up to 320 kilometers. For testing on the Baltic island of Eustone, near the fishing village of Pienemund, the facilities of the test site and the research center were erected. However, wartime conditions dictated completely different priorities. The first successful launch of the A-4 took place on October 3, 1942. However, the rocket remained raw, so each new instance was released and was used to solve current technical problems. One of them was the mystery of high-altitude explosions, which first appeared in January 1944. For some unknown reason, some of the missiles exploded either immediately after launch at altitudes of 4,800 or higher, or when descending in the target area. The problem was especially acute at the Blizna test site in Poland, also known as Heidlitter, where the 444th A4 test battery was located. By March 1944, they managed to deal with accidents on the ascending section of the rocket's trajectory. It turned out that they were caused by strong vibration which led to a violation of the tightness of the fuel lines during engine operation. As a result of spraying, alcohol penetrated the tail section, combined with air and ignited from the flame of the rocket. Even after eliminating this shortcoming, 70% of the launched of fours exploded at the end of the trajectory, not reaching the ground. The cause of the accidents in this case turned out to be a highly sensitive electric percussion fuse. When the rocket fell on the target, its structure began to collapse from aerodynamic loads, and the device was triggered by the resulting tremors. Taking the opportunity, the missilemen conducted a series of vertical launches at the firing ranges in Blizna and Pienemund. Finally, the A-4 was able to demonstrate its ability to achieve space altitude. 
This was probably the first launch in which the A4 overcame the conditional boundary of space, rising to 140 kilometers. Rocket for America In September 1944, after the first of four rockets, dubbed V2, thanks to German propaganda, fell on London, few people realized that something unusual had happened. After all, before that, since June, British territory was repeatedly fired upon by V-1 rockets, with which the British more or less learned to fight. In addition, the government of Winston Churchill made significant efforts to keep information about the new weapon secret for some time and thereby prevent a wave of panic among the civilian population of the capital. However, at the end of September, reports appeared in the American press that, in addition to rockets, the Nazis were using large rockets fired from aircraft. Later it became clear that V-2s were launched from ground installations and could fly a considerable distance. Following this, rumors began to circulate that Germany had even more powerful missiles in stock, capable of crossing the Atlantic and striking New York. Jump into space. After the defeat of the Third Reich, the Allies and the anti-Hitler coalition got rich trophies. The hunt for technologies and specialists began. Particular attention was paid to ballistic missiles, and the study of their capabilities gave rise to the idea of using the A-4 to launch a pilot to space altitude. The first project of this kind, Megarock, was proposed by members of the British Interplanetary Society. Artist-designer Ralph Smith and engineer Harry Ross developed a variant of the A-4 with a pressurized cockpit whose weight was calculated to allow it to climb up to 304 kilometers. In addition to the pilot, they intended to place a parachute system and a set of various instruments in the detachable cockpit for studying the upper atmosphere and checking the stability of radio communications. To increase the flight altitude, the authors of the project had to slightly modify the rocket itself. They increased the fuel component tanks, strengthened their walls, expanded the blades of the graphite gas rudders, but removed the tail stabilizers. Due to the changes, the height of the rocket was 17.5 meters. The total weight was 21.2 tons. Before the flight, the pilot had to put on a standard high-altitude suit with his own air tank and rescue parachute. During the flight, he could observe the surrounding space through the porthole and periscope. The maximum acceleration should not exceed 3 grams. According to calculations, the rocket would have reached the top of the trajectory in 6 minutes 16 seconds after launch. The Soviet leadership took long-range missiles much more seriously than the British, since before the war the U.S. had developed its own school of rocket science, inferior to the German one only because of the general backwardness of the production base. The new military-political confrontation encouraged the development of non-standard types of weapons, so groups of specialists were sent to Poland, Germany, Austria, and Czechoslovakia to study the A-4. The trophy hunters did not have time to complete their work abroad, and the most enterprising of them have already proposed a suborbital launch project using a German unit. It went down in history under the name VR-190, Victory, and its authors were Michael Klavdivich Takonrovov and Nikolay Gavrilovich Chernyshev. They drew up their outlines in general form in the middle of 1945. It was proposed to modify one of the captured A-4s, providing it with a pressurized cockpit for two pilots, created using the experience of manufacturing pre-war stratospheric nacelles. The main task was to study the complex effect of vibration, overload, and subsequent weightlessness on the human body. According to one of the participants in those events, the chief designer of rocket technology, Sergei Pavlovich Korolev himself, spoke out on the sidelines against the BP-190. Taking into account the situation, the management of the institute changed the direction of the project. It was named Rocket Probe, and since 1947 was aimed at studying parachute rescue systems for spent stages and their warheads during testing. After the adoption of these amendments, the project received a positive assessment. Korolev's refusal to support Pobeda is easily explained. The chief designer did not tolerate projecting and understood that until ballistic missiles in the Soviet Union were put on stream, it was too early to plan a manned suborbital flight. In addition, the carrying capacity of the A-4 and BP-190 
did not match the ambitious program of the designated experiments. The time for manned rocket and space systems came later, 